Welcome back to my video tutorial on UDK. My name is Dave Skaggs and I'm a student at the Guild Hall. Uh, we were talking about matinee in the last video and we had we took one of these helicopters and we had it fly across the screen. And in this tutorial we're going to go ahead and animate this one which comes in, has a little more complex animation, has some particle effects. Hopefully you can see the wind that's uh, blowing off the buildings and the uh, the jet wash that's coming from the back. You might be able to see it a little bit better from here. Yeah, you can see a little bit. Of course it shoots some missiles down here which we'll learn as well. There you go. And then it flies away. So we're going to build all that from scratch and hopefully yours will look like mine or better when you're done. Just go ahead and load up example map from the UDK directory and inside there we're going to go ahead and just like last the last video we're going to copy out one of these helicopters and the first thing we're going to do which you should do with all uh, objects that you animate and just get in the practice of changing its physics to interpolating that'll allow it to be uh, so you can move it uh, if you don't do that then you'll get all these complex uh, you get all these keyframes in uh, the matinee editor and it won't move. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Uh, second, we're going to jump into Kismet. I got it minimized down here at the bottom. And then we're going to right click and add a new matinee sequence. And inside there, we're going to add a new empty group. I'm going to call it just ship and I'm going to right click and add a movement track so that we can add some animation to this, this sucker. Now I always like to just as soon as I add the movement track go ahead and click that yellow box it'll put the the movement curves up here so that you'll be able to turn them on and off and play with uh, whichever curve you want to. I mean you've got the forward movement the up movement and the side to side movement right there and you can play, it just gives you more uh, control down the road with uh, you know playing with individual curves. Now let's minimize this stuff and let's put our ship where we want it to be keyframed. You know before we do that I think I'm gonna scroll out here and extend my timeline. I want about 30 seconds. I know this because I've already animated it. That's about how long it was. I'll take the playback scroller and I'll scroll it out there as well. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the four views and I am going to move that out to where we need it to go. Let's see. I'm going to make these front and side views a little more useful by zooming out. Let's grab my ship again. Where did it, my ship go? There it is. Okay. So you can see over here in the top view that this is actually the, um, this is kind of the uh, landing area, if you will. Uh, and then this is the building. So we're going to want it to land between those two objects. So I'm just going to place it like so, raise it up to about where. I'm going to want it to come in from and then I'm going to rotate it around so it can come from that direction. And I want it to I want it to start out here by the by these skyscrapers. I want it to be bigger. There we go. Not too much bigger, but a little bit. Good. Okay, got that set up. Let's go ahead and go back into matinee and key our first our first keyframe. Got our keyframe, key add key up here at the top left. Select that. And it says auto, it says adjust key zero. So we've got that there. Now I'm going to move out in the slider to about 6.5. Um, that should be about enough. And I'm going to drag my ship out to about where I want it. Now, 
Um, just a quick thought before we get ahead of ourselves. Uh, this is something I've already done, but it's something you're always going to want to do when you do anything more complex than just moving a door or, or um, an animation on, on just one path like we did with the ship. Uh, for more complex animations, you're always going to want to pull out a piece of paper and uh, work out the keyframe animations on paper first. Uh, find out uh, just where you want it there and, and try to plan out the timing as well, whether it's going to take three or four seconds. Try to figure those. The more you can figure out on paper before you get into the editor, uh, the faster the faster and the easier it's going to be for you. Uh, to animate, it's going to save you a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of headaches. I was going to say heartaches. Probably won't save you those. Okay, cool. So we've got our trajectory out there. It's uh, shooting us out. I don't want to waste any time. Let's go ahead and continue animating. I'm going to drop this. That's about where it's going to start to stop. So on the next one, we're actually going to add some down movement. I'm going to pull it out to about 12 because when it slows down, I mean, we just did, we just covered all that distance in six seconds. And the same amount of time we're going to cover for about this much distance. But that's because it's slowing down. It takes longer for the uh, action to occur. About right there. Go ahead and keyframe that, and you can see that it uh, it's now moved straight down. I believe we're on linear as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these keyframes. Okay, so you can see right here in the curves editor that we've got some like uh, we're zoomed in really close, and we can't see really what's going on. So let's go ahead and select the fit view to all, and we can see what's going on with our curves. Uh, they're all set to uh, user right now. You have a couple different settings. I can set them to linear. Uh, that's the default setting, so it's, I'm not doing anything because I don't have any of them selected. If you hold Control and Alt, you can do a, a marquee around your keyframes, just like so. And then you can change them here. You can go, oh, actually, no, you can't. It's odd. Well, that, that, does, that does work as the default. They also have these buttons here, so you could change them that way. And the icons work just as well. Just hit linear. Uh, you can hit the curve user constant is uh, like stepped animation. There we go. Curved auto clamped. That's a pretty that's a pretty good way to go. It's a little smoother. You can see that uh, it naturally gives us that kind of uh, that smooth curve that we're going to want for the downward motion on that. So I think that's going to work out really well. Let's go ahead and look at a few things before we move on to the next uh, keyframe. I want you to take note of that I have it on local um, uh, the coordinate system. I have the coordinate system on, on local because the different colors correspond uh, to the curves in the curve editor. For instance, uh, we have red as the forward movement, uh, and I know that if I click off these other uh, curves, and I only have this one, then when I move uh, one of these curves, it's going to move it back and forth. But if I had it on world, you can see how that changes. It changes to green. 